I have no idea what I'm doing. All right, just so we're clear, this is not a video of me teaching you how to use a hammer and dolly. This is me learning how to use a hammer and dolly. Now, some of y'all might be thinking, ain't you supposed to be working on a stupid truck? Yeah, I am. But every single thing I've done on this channel has taught me something. Everything I've done so far was leading up to something else I planned to do. For example, when we put the target top in the death trap, that let me know what works, what doesn't work, and what have you. Now I have a better idea of exactly what I need to do to put a full metal convertible on the stupid truck. When we widened the bed to put a hot tub in it, that taught me a lot about the framework as to what I could do in reference to body dropping the bed of the stupid truck. You see a pattern developing here? Today's project will allow us to take out these massive dents in this truck, which will then teach me how to take out the massive dent in the front of the stupid truck. If I can learn something from this to help that, we're golden. Let's see what we can do. So a couple years ago, I thought I wanted to get into metal shaping and I went down to my local auto parts place and went to get a body working hammer and found one that was a nice metal design. And the guy behind the counter said, you know, for five bucks more, you can get a kit. So he pulled this out. Of course, I never got it to go back up into the box just right. So I've never used this thing because I felt like the hammers were sort of cheesy with the little lightweight wooden handles. Uh, it was only five bucks more than the solid metal handle and what have you, the hammer I had picked out. But the reason I bought it was because it came with all the dollies and they've got a little bit of surface rust on them because I couldn't get the thing back in the box just right. I mean, it that becomes clear that I've never used this. I mean, one of the hammers and two of the dollies are still in the plastic wrapper. But we're going to try and use these and see what we can do. Well, it's been raining for a couple of days, but I don't think all this water is going to affect us. So we got our three body hammers and we got our three regular hammers and we got our four dollies. Now, it sort of looks like somebody lifted the back of the truck with a forklift that went all the way across. And that sort of confuses me because absolutely nothing on this truck was disconnected or missing or anything like that on the rear end. So, why? Anyway, this is what we're working with. We're going to try and get rid of that. Now, my first inclination, if we're being honest, is to take that BFH right there and come to the back side and smack it back into place. But now take into consideration, we don't really want to stretch this metal. I'm sure that in the process of denning, it's already stretched somewhat, but we just want to put it back where it used to be and not stretch it out in the process because then it won't fit where it used to be. So, I don't know. And this is where my brand new microphone decided it was tired of working for the day and quit. Of course, I didn't know that. So I started out this uh, process by manually trying to put this dent as close as I could get it back to its proper place long before we ever started beating on it with a, with a hammer or pushing on it with a dolly. Now, that being said, 
uh, this entire video concept has been hijacked by the lack of audio. So obviously we're doing a voiceover, which means that we might as well cut this whole 17 minute clip up into much shorter clips. And I can just explain to you what I was learning as I went through the process. Now, hindsight 2020, I can tell you right now, what I did next was the last thing I should have done. That top flat edge, what technically is the bottom of the truck, was staring me in the face. And I just wanted to flatten it out and straighten it out, and it was killing my OCD. But in all reality, that should have been the last thing I did. I should have taken the dent out as best as possible and then straightened that flat edge out. I, I stand firm by that, knowing what I now know, but at the time I had no clue. I could be wrong. Maybe I did it exactly like it should have been done, but I believe I should have done that last. If you do body work, you feel free to let me know in the, in the comments if I did it the right way. Now, the reason I say that is because each time I made any amount of progress on the main body panel of this truck, I ended up distorting that lip and having to straighten it back out again. And each time you distort that lip and straighten it back out, that makes that point in the middle even weaker. So take care of your dent, then take care of those edges. Now, I walked into this process with a comprehension that there are two different types of hammer and dolly, uh, two different methods, if you will. You've got hammer on dolly, which is where you put your dolly on one side of the metal, you hammer the other side, and you hammer directly on top of the dolly. The other method is hammer off dolly, which is where you hammer obviously off the dolly. So your dolly is say in the center of a dent and you're hammering around the perimeter of that dent. Now, what I didn't know was how to or when to use each of those methods. So this is stuff I had to figure out. I went through the process of multiple hammers, multiple dollies, uh, what did work, what didn't work, what I was doing wrong as I was doing it wrong, hopefully, sometimes, not always, uh, as is the case with the top edge or bottom flat edge of the bed. But what I found was hammer on dolly is great for taking out and flattening small dents. So when you have little dimples in the, in the metal, you can put your dolly uh, behind the metal and flatten it back out, push them back in and what have you. Hammer off dolly is better for big dents. And understand that those big dents require a lot of pressure from the backside and then you hammer around the perimeter of the edge of that dent and that uh, manipulates with the pressure manipulates the dent back to the location it's supposed to be, at which point you can use hammer on dolly to pull the ridge out of that dent on that edge. Now I had a total of six different hammers available to me here. And throughout the course of this learning experience, I used every single one of them. But for some reason, I just kept coming back to this east wing. It took me forever to figure out why that was. Need a more flat dolly right there. Now I said I had four different dollies, but every single one of them has a curve on it like that. And I wanted something that was more flat like that. But every time I turned around, I felt like that wasn't big enough. So what I ended up doing was finding a piece of scrap metal. It's a quarter inch piece of flat iron. Actually, I think it's the uh, lip off of a piece of channel iron. 
and it was already painted so that was pretty convenient but um, I cleaned up one edge on it and I had a bigger flat dolly to use in certain areas of this project now overall this right here this body line is not quite as straight as i would like it to be i don't know that i'm going to be able to make it perfect uh, of course there is no perfect due to the fact that in this case this is i'm having trouble getting behind it with a dolly to uh, beat this into submission overall though it's looking pretty good i mean it looks great compared uh exact except for this one dent there but the crease i think is for the most part out of it now there is a spot right here that i hammered on it from the other side too hard and now i gotta bring it back in but now understand we're not we're not trying to get this perfect i i ain't gonna get this perfect it's that simple what we're trying to do is make this as close to the proper shape as possible so that we can use the least amount of body filler on it that's the goal and at the moment I'm not unhappy with it. The only thing I wish I had done was earlier in the morning do this so that maybe there was better light for you guys. But it was cold this morning, so that wasn't going to happen. But different tools for different jobs. So when it comes to this, we can't get behind it with a dolly to beat it out from the other side and we can't get into it with a hammer to beat it out from this side because of this structure right here so what we're gonna have to do is use a different tool and i've got just the tool in mind to pull that dent back out just that little bitty bit we're getting there i'm not disappointed with where we're at right now that's for sure I should say that my brand new microphone sort of disappointed me because it crapped out on me, but apparently it was operator error because I did charge them, but I did not pull the little plastic piece off the charging port, which means it wasn't charged. <laughs> Duh. I've had this sitting on the shelf for quite a while. Of course, I don't have a microphone now because it's on charge, but... Ooh. Crappy packaging. Yeah. What I got was a $99 dent repair stud welder kit. Comes with a slide hammer and the welding gun. And we're gonna try that out in the next video. And I did, now $99 plus seven and a half percent sales tax in the state of Florida came out to be right at $107 uh, within uh, actually just under $107 and I got some more studs welding studs uh, two different sizes because I have no idea what I'm doing here either but we'll figure it out yeah baby I know I said I was gonna use a different method today but it's a lot warmer today so we're gonna try and straighten this out some more i'm not quite ready to give up on this method and move to the uh, 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 stud welder just yet <laughs> Well, 
I don't know. I don't know if this microphone's working or not. Hold on. Green light's on. Well, I don't know if this is going to work. But I'm thinking that if I can take that and then use this leverage. There we go. Let's see if we can get, get this bent out some without jacking everything else up. To some degree, the problem is I need this to be right in front to get the pressure right. Ah, that wasn't comfortable. Anyway, this is looking pretty good. That dent is half as big as it was, but it could still be done better with a stud welder, hopefully. We'll find out when we get to that. Now this dent looks like it's going to be a little easier, but I think it's very deceptive. So... Trying to figure out how to attack that. I think I want to take a flat bar on the back side and try to get rid of that den after I do it uh, manually. And then we'll try to work with the rest of it. I don't know. We'll see what happens with it. Well... No, that ain't gonna happen. Alright, so here's what we ended up with. It's pretty smooth. It's got a bad spot right here. It's beat up a little bit. Tap that in just a little bit right here. Then again, it... I'm saying tap it in, but yeah, just a little bit. And tap that spot right there in. That's going to require a minimal amount of body filler right along that crease. But man, I am super happy with that. Well, sometimes it's not totally deceptive. Don't get me wrong. Still got a big spot right here. But overall, that's looking pretty good. Yes, sir. All right, so what did we learn? Well, the first thing I learned was the fact that my wife doesn't like the Santa Claus look. Apparently, I forgot to shave last month. She said I look like an old man. And I thought that was pretty convenient because, well, I'm an old man. But as far as a hammer and dolly goes, I learned quite a bit, actually. All right, so when we started this video, I uh, expressed to you guys how I thought that these three body shaping hammers that come in this kit seem sort of lightweight and cheesy. And... Honestly, I still feel that way to me, but you got to take into consideration up until now, every time I've ever tried to 
shape or manipulate sheet metal, it's always been 16 gauge. And you wouldn't think there's a huge difference between 16 gauge and what is mostly 19 gauge on an S10 body. But there is a huge difference between 16 and 19 gauge. This 19 gauge can be manipulated with a small, lightweight hammer. Now, most of what I did my body work with as far as hammer off dolly was with my east wing. Now, understand, this is a heavier hammer, and I'm more comfortable with it because I've been using one of these all my life. So when it comes down to it, it's not so much that it's heavier as it is my comfort level. More importantly, it's a matter of how much force you put behind the hammer. You can use a big hammer and put a small amount of force. Keep in mind that you don't want to dent your metal to the point that you've got yet another dent that you got to straighten out especially considering that every dent that you put in that metal is going to stretch that metal to the point that it may not be able to go back to its proper shape. Now, with all that being said, I did use my BFH a couple times. I also learned that it's also beneficial to have multiple shapes of hammers. So when everything's said and done, you can get your desired effect. But understand, it's not impossible to do it with a single household hammer. Just might take a little more work. To me, it was more beneficial to have multiple dollies of different sizes and shapes. So that kit was 100% worth the money at this point. Now, we could just slab that up with some body filler and be done with it, but that's not the point of this exercise. We're trying to get the metal back as close as it can be to use the absolute bare minimum amount of body filler. So understand that when it comes to hammer and dolly, you're never going to get that metal just right because it's, it's been stretched in the process of being dented. You're pulling that dent out, but in the process, you still have extra metal there because that metal is thinner and stretched out more. Might be minor, but it's still stretched out and it's never going to go right back to where it want, wants to, where it once was. Now, if you are trying to use a hammer and dolly and to put it back on a beat up work truck, that's fine. But if you plan to have a nice finish on this vehicle, you're not going to make it perfect with just hammering dolly and not putting some amount of body filler on it and finishing, finishing the job off with uh, primer and paint. Uh, when it comes down to it, every single amount of body work out there has to require some amount of body filler with very, very few exceptions, or at least that's my experience. But then again, my experience has been mostly in the mini truck world and the mini trucking world ain't got no shyness about using body filler. <laughs> Every time I walk by this dent right here, I just want to massage it a little more. Peace, love, and many trucks.